Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I have a very special guest for you today. I have someone that goes by the uh, moniker Property Princess. Someone I found on social media who is putting out a lot of information, has the right mindset, and I just feel better when I read her posts. So let's, uh, let's welcome the Property Princess Aww. to the show. How are you? Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Great uh, being here. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well this morning. How are you? I'm doing great. I always like talking to people who are doing the right things and trying to help others. So why don't you introduce us, introduce us who, to who is the property princess and uh, we'll, we'll get into your story after that. Okay, so um, actually my name is Miana Epps or I go by Yana Epps on Facebook for short. Um, I am a real estate investor. I'm also a licensed agent. Uh, I've been licensed since 2008 and I've been investing since 2005. So most of my background and experience has been in single family investing. So um, rehabbing single family homes, things like that. And uh, what I'm leaning towards now and actually shifting my entire business focus towards is multifamily investing. So um, ultimately when I got started in investing, my whole goal was to acquire apartments and I wanted to think of ways to do that, like uh, building capital by flipping houses, wholesaling, all the transactional strategies that most of us have that, you know, we think we need to get into multifamily. And then all of a sudden I found out that wasn't true. <laughs> so oh, um, I can talk about it now or. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, let's go. Let's, let's just jump in. Where do you want to go? There's, we got lots to talk okay. about. Sure. So, you know, I always thought I just needed to come up with all these savings uh, to be able to buy larger properties. And then I started to read more about um, syndication. So once I started to investigate what that looks like and how I could actually put together deals, um, you know, using other investors and having an active part of the deal without having to bring all the capital by myself, then I realized maybe some of the wholesale strategies that I was focused on before aren't, necess aren't necessary. So, you know, flipping houses in this market right now is, is such a volatile and risky strategy, especially here in the Bay where, you know, price points are really high. You have to put up a lot more, you have more invested. Um, anything beyond a cosmetic flip is gonna be, you know, require permits and take more time. So we could be going to war pretty soon, it looks like. I mean, you just never know what's gonna happen with the economy. And um, it's just really risky. So, you know, I started to uh, take a closer look at wholesaling, which is very little risk, but it's also very competitive and very challenging. And all those strategies work if you do them right. Uh, I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying that, you know, that's not the prerequisite for multifamily investing. So once I learned that, I just really started to uh, press my focus towards multifamily, learning everything that I could learn about it, meeting people like yourself, um, connecting with um, you know, other investors that have tons of experience, getting mentors, networking, anything I could do to like uh, push myself towards that. Yeah, and you have done, um, you know, everybody talks a good game about networking and, and, and meeting mentors. Very few execute at your level and, um, you know, are you just a natural social butterfly or, or I mean, because that's not always easy reaching out to people you don't know and, and really, you know, getting close to them and asking questions and getting guidance. How, how do you do that? I would say, hey, yes, for sure. That is in my nature. Um, I have about 20 years of sales and marketing experience. So um, networking is part of my career. And it is a living for me. So um, I think I'm pretty good at it. I love talking to people. I could be sitting next to a stranger on the train and just kind of strike up a conversation. So that's in me, you know, and that's natural for me. Um, I'm very outgoing and I like to make friends, you know, so it's easy. Um, but I did actually make it a point in 2019 to introduce myself to all of the people that I followed on YouTube or podcasts somehow, some way, I made a connection either through social media or in person. So last year, the, the largest investment was in the networking. Yeah, and, and it shows. Um, 
you know, I've seen, uh, I don't know if it's your storyboard or stories or whatever, with some of the guys, some of the individuals you were pictured with. And I'm like, hey, I know most of those people. So uh, congratulations for, for doing that. Uh, I want to go back to how this all started, right? So you talked about starting in 05, which is awesome because I'm, I'm so nervous for all the newbies who started in the last five years, kind of after the crash. You and I both started right around the same time. I started in 03, you started in 05. Uh, so let's talk about pre-crash. What what uh, what was the property princess doing pre-crash? Well, um, the the investment that I made was into a personal residence, and we did take a loss. You know, I suffered during that time. Um, I had to short sell my home, and I had to wait another three years to um, buy another home. So basically everything that I put into the house, the brand new kitchen and everything, the bathrooms, it was all lost, you know? It was like, I'm young, I'm trying to make the right moves, I'm doing all the right things, I saved my money and I put it into real estate and next thing you know, it's gone in a second. But um, fortunately, I was able to bounce back from that. I mean, um, you know, the market came back and I continued to save my money and, uh, short sales didn't have uh, as much of an impact as foreclosures, you know, so I just suffered through it. Um, actually, in my first investment, I brought my mom and my dad into it. So we all kind of suffered together. <laughs> and that's never fun. But yeah. Um, yeah, we bounced back. Well, that you know, that's, that's real life. And, and so. part of the reason, part of the reason I wanted to talk about that is because Lots of the stories um, kind of pre-crash kind of ended like that. And I wanted to bring it up because we're, we're now in 2019 and at least where we live, right? The Bay, uh, prices are 50% higher than they were in 08, right? At the, at the last peak. And I'm nervous for folks. Yes. So uh, yeah. you, not, you talked about flipping today and maybe going to war and all those things. How can we caution people that it's not as easy as it looks on HGTV? I mean, it's, it's a big concern of mine. <laughs> um, well, when you're talking about flipping specifically, right? Yes. Well, you know, I think there's ways to do it. So it is definitely not as easy as it looks. And I think that the, the the majority of the profits are made in your purchase. So one thing that I hear a lot of inexperienced people talk about is trying to find deals, but they're looking on Zillow and they're looking <laughs> on the MLS. Like the first thing that I'll say is you can't find a discounted property on Zillow and l leave yourself enough profit margin to make money on a flip because you have to consider your rehab costs. You have to think about what it's worth after the repairs. And typically, if you're not purchasing that property at 40 to 60% or 70% all in with all your rehab, then you're probably not going to make a lot of money on that deal. And I think the best way to protect yourself is to educate yourself and uh, hedge against losses by purchasing at a discount. And you can do that by talking to wholesalers at your local real estate meetups, or you can do that by connecting with brokers and getting off market uh, pocket listings. There's so many ways to do it, but I think you should educate yourself in order to take those steps instead of diving right in. I, I'm so glad you brought that up. I, I, so many people think you can flip just by buying out of the MLS and, and it was possible, but it was possible in 2010, right? Where there was nobody around buying. Um, it's not today. Everybody's looking, you know, if right. it's on Zillow and there's a thousand people looking at it, there's probably not a lot of room. And oh, by the way, a 10% discount to ARV is, that's not a deal, right? You lose most of that in transaction costs and, and all of that. So, uh, so let's go. Let's, yeah, let's get into. I mean, if you want to, if you want to. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. So I was just going to say. I was going to say, you know, there's. <laughs> this internet connection. Yeah. It's me. It's my fault. It's my stupid Wi-Fi. But, um. I was going to say, you know, if you want to pick up properties off market that you're looking to acquire at a discount and they're for other purposes, maybe like rentals, then a lot of those 10% uh, discounts still make sense, but not for flipping. And that's yeah. all. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So let's, let's, let's uh, fast forward maybe uh, 
you know, when did you get your first investment house? Was, were you lucky enough to buy in 2010, 11, um, you know, at, at near the bottom or where does, where does your story go so, post crash? No, actually the, the experience that I have in investing has majority of the majority of it's been for personal properties that I've owned and lived in. So every house I've rehabbed and sold for a profit, but because it wasn't within 12 months in some cases, you know, some of them were close to being flips, but others weren't. Uh, but I've never owned rentals at this point because my whole goal was to get into multifamily from the beginning. And I knew that I wanted to take a more consolidated approach from the beginning. So uh, being in California where the rule of 1% is very hard to meet, um, nothing around me makes sense for rentals. And now that there's rent control and strict tenant, uh, strict landlord laws in California, um, I knew that I had to make investments out of state. Uh, so I was just trying to save money so I could buy apartments. But now that I'm you know, ready to make those investments into my rental portfolio, um, I'm only looking at multifamily out of state. So it. it's never been, uh, I can't say never, because when I was 19, I did try to buy a duplex with my dad at, here in Oakland, California. And I think at that time, if we would have purchased it um, based on appreciation, it would have been a great investment. But uh, now with the new laws and restrictions and things, I'm just not interested in being a landlord in California. Yeah, these uh, this rent control and almost almost anti landlording laws that have been impacted and, and probably more are coming. Uh, they are really making California non friendly. So I uh, totally get the idea of out of state investing. Um, so, but you had you were flipping uh, in California kind of post crash, correct? Um, yes. Well, uh, flipping with my parents and rehabbing properties on my own. So yeah. yes, I've done that. So let's talk about some of those just so people can get an appetite of what you've done uh, in the last decade or so. Um, okay. So for example, I, I really love to tell the, well, this isn't a flip necessarily, but I really like to tell the story of how I bought my house off market. Okay. And um, I don't know, is that something you want to hear about? Absolutely. Whatever story you want to tell, I want them to get to know you. Okay. So um, the house that I currently live in, um, I was searching for, so I'll take it a step back. So I, ha I owned a house here in the Bay Area and I was ready to sell it because um, I was getting married. And um, my husband owned a house in another city. So I sold his house first and then I sold my house and then I was trying to find a house for us to live in together. And um, the house that I put an offering on was accepted. They accepted the offer, but it was contingent upon the final sale of my house. So um, I went, well, they three days later, they called me and they rejected the offer, basically, and went with another offer for the same price that didn't have the same contingency. So I was really heartbroken because this was a neighborhood that was really convenient for us. We fell in love with it and we both wanted to live there or he hadn't seen it, actually, but I wanted to live there. So I went um, basically scouring the neighborhood, you know, looking around, door knocking, asking questions until I found a house that was for rent that I was able to negotiate off market. So um, I like to talk about the advantages of buying properties off market and avoiding competition because I think it's really beneficial to put yourself in that position to not have to compete with other buyers and get into bidding wars. And I was able to negotiate very favorable terms uh, for myself with the homeowners and um, move in and complete a rehab all within 10 days. So wow. it was a pretty uh, expedited process, but I was pretty impressed with myself even because um, I had some motivation behind getting ready for the holidays. And this was in November, a couple of years back. And uh, as soon as I got the keys, I came in for the first time with my demo team and we knocked out the project and it was done in 10 days, everything. That's awesome. I love, I love stories like that. So I, I am curious, where did the property princess uh, moniker, where, where, where was it born? How long has it been there? And where are you taking this, uh, this moniker? Cause it's pretty fun. 
Um, I, you know, having a sales and marketing background, uh, I just wanted to come up with something memorable, catchy, and kind of brand myself. And that's the vision that I have for myself is basically creating an empire around real estate and I'm a princess. So <laughs> why not? <laughs> Makes total sense to me. I didn't know if uh, you know, you never know where these stories come from. So, uh, I think you're right. You are a princess. Uh, why don't you talk about the million dollars? Yeah, I gave it to myself. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> why don't you talk about the million dollar multifamily mindset? Cause that's a uh, Facebook group. That's where I found you. That's where I was like, Oh wow. She's someone I have to follow. Yeah. So, um, it was very important for me to talk about things like financial literacy and um, building generational wealth, uh, things that aren't typically taught to us. Um, I've done a lot of self-educating and I think it's very important for me to share what I learned. I don't claim to be like an expert in any field, but um, anything that I'm learning, it, I just get so excited about it that I instantly want to like call somebody and explain it to them so they can know too, you know? And um, one of the reasons I created the platform is that so we can, you know, have a forum where not only am I sharing information that I want to share, but um, being a part of other Facebook groups made me realize that there are just so many resources and for people that have questions about investing or multifamily, you know, this could be a place where they come and get their questions answered. So I thought creating the group would be a great idea. And it is, it's working out great. I love it. I love the collaboration. I love everyone's input and contributions. And it makes me feel really good to have built something like that because I think it's bringing a lot of value to a lot of people. Oh, there's no question. I wouldn't have reached out if I didn't see value there. There's, there's lots of Facebook things going on. I'm like, you know, you're a poser. You don't do anything. Uh, you've got something. Um, you've got the following and the activity. It's, it's, it's admirable. I'm curious, what are your goals for 2020 and 21? Where, where, where do you see yourself in the next 12 to 24 months? So my business uh, is called Ask Me Investments. And when I started that business in 2019, I was uh, specifically, uh, I was specifically focused on wholesaling. So uh, wholesaling has been decent. Um, it hasn't been as easy in this market as I thought it would be. I have done some virtual wholesaling um, and different markets, but it's still very transactional. And for me, it's very time consuming. Uh, it takes a lot of money to continue marketing and it takes a lot of attention to continue uh, working with my team and, you know, feeding the campaigns, checking on it on a daily basis. It's like, you know, a very big commitment and it's a little bit too um, time consuming for me, I would say. And my business has slowly stored, started to morph into um, a business where we're strictly focused on picking up properties that we can flip here in the Bay Area. Wholesaling will be uh, not our focus, but one of our you know, secondary strategies. And then focused on building partnerships for syndication, finding investors that would like to partner with us to buy larger assets. And my goal is to close our first deal this year. And I'm hopeful that that will happen in the early part of the year so that we can, you know, continue our progress. And I set out with the goal of a thousand doors this year. So we'll see how close I come to that. Wow. Thousand. That's a big number. I know number. that's very uh, aggressive and ambitious. <laughs> yeah. Very, very cool. This, this is going to be. I think, it's, I think it's possible. It's yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was just going to say, how can people follow the Property Princess? Uh, what Facebook groups do you want them to go to? How can they follow you? Because you got a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I'm also a host of a local meetup here in the Bay Area. Um, if you guys are in the Bay Area and would like to attend some of our um, in-person meetings and get some value from our local real estate meetups, you can go to meetup.com and check out the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco Bay Area mo uh, real estate moguls and follow our group. And um, we're also on Facebook at Million Dollar Multifamily Mindset. I always get tongue twisted when I say that, but um, that's our Facebook group. So you can follow us there. And you can also follow me on Instagram at The Real Property Princess. That's awesome. 
Well, I want to appreciate you taking some time this, uh, this Saturday morning to put this together. We will get this downloaded and uploaded later today, uh, and I will share the link with you. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate this. Lots of fun. You got it. Take care.